These next set of videos are going to take a look at another way we can solve differential equations by transforming the calculus equation into an algebra equation. And the advantage of the algebra equation is we have many more skills and experiences in working with algebra and we can solve it in the world of algebra and then using an inverse transform go back to the original calculus equation and have a solution now in the calculus world. So our question today to set this up is to ask the question, what is a Laplace transform? And Laplace was kind of the mathematician that did some of the leading work on these transforms, so he gets the name. And basically, we can give you a definition for Laplace transforms. Basically, we're going to have some function f of x. And with the Laplace transform of the function f of, actually, we're going to say f of t, because usually time is our dependent, independent variable, is equal to an integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st of our function f of t dt. And quite often we'll use a capital letter f to represent this function. And as you see, the only constant that should be left after we do this integral is the constant, or the only variable left will be the variable s. So in the algebra world, we'll have a function capital F in s. In the calculus world, we'll have a lowercase f in t. What this does is it's going to convert a differential equation into an algebraic exp equation. So let's take a look at some examples. In this video, we're just going to look at the Laplace transform definition and um, some tables that help us calculate them quicker as well. Not so much doing the differential equation solving yet. That'll be saved for another video. So let's find the Laplace transform of the function e to the 2t. Well, using our definition, the Laplace transform is the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times our function, which is e to the 2t, dt. Which, since we have the same base, we can add the exponent. And we're going to have e to the, I'm going to factor out the negative t out of the exponent, leaving behind s minus 2 dt. And then we can actually do that integration by dividing by the new exponent. So we're going to have negative 1 over s minus 2 times e to the negative t times s minus 2. And that's going to be integrated from 0 to infinity. And I'm kind of using some calculus notation a little bit lazily. We should be integrating from 0 to b and then take the limit as b goes to infinity. But I think we can kind of work through what's happening when we plug infinity into this exponent. Plugging that top infinity in, we end up with e to a negative huge number, which makes that e to the negative huge number 0 times anything is 0. And then we're going to subtract a negative, which makes it plus 1 over s minus 2 times e to the, and when we plug 0 in for the t, we end up with e to the 0 power, which is just 1. And so that leads to our final transform. e to the 2t transforms to 1 over s minus 2. Let's try another example. Let's find the Laplace transform of the sine of t. Well, by definition, we know that's the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times our function the sine of t dt. We can solve this with integration by parts. We'll let u equal our e to the negative st and our dv equal sine t dt. du then is going to be negative s e to the negative st. Remember our variable here is t. s is a constant. 
and then v, the antiderivative of sine, oh, forgot my dt in there, is going to be negative cosine t. So we have u times v, which is negative e to the negative st times the cosine of t, minus the integral of v du, which we've got three negatives going on, so it's still going to be negative. S, S is a constant, though, so let's pull the S out. E to the negative ST times the cosine of T dt. Well, we can do integration by parts again, much the same way. E to the negative ST is our U. DU then is going to become negative S E to the negative ST dt. Our dv is the cosine of t dt, whose antiderivative is just the sine of t. So putting this all together, we've got negative e to the negative st cosine of t minus s times our u times v, which is e to the negative st sine of t minus the integral of v du, I'm going to pull the negative and the s out, which gives us e to the negative st sine of t dt, which is nice because that is the original integral. And I'm just going to say that equals i, where i represents the original integral. And then we can solve for i, and then that's what we're going to actually plug our limits into. So simplifying, we have e to the negative st cosine of t minus s e to the negative st sine of t. When we distribute the negative s times s, we get negative s squared times the integral of e to the negative st times the sine of t dt. And actually, instead of all of that, I'm just going to write i representing the integral equals i. We're solving for i, solving for that integral. So we have e to the negative st cosine of t minus s e to the negative st sine of t is equal to i plus s squared i. And if I factor out the i, we're left with 1 plus s squared. So I'm going to divide by 1 over 1 plus s squared. And we get negative e to the negative st cosine of t minus s e to the negative st sine of t is equal to i or the integral. And because it's a Laplace transform, we're going to integrate that from 0 to infinity. Now we saw earlier when we plug infinity into the exponents, e to the negative infinity is 0, so we end up with 0 minus 0 times something else. All of that's going to come out to 0. Minus, when I plug 0 into the sine, the sine will go to 0. But when we plug 0 into the cosine, the cosine becomes 1. e to the 0 becomes 1, so we end up with a negative 1. So we're subtracting a negative, which makes it a positive. 1 over 1 plus s squared. Which means our Laplace transform of the sine of t is just 1 over 1 plus s squared. Let's try one more. Let's find the Laplace transform of t cubed. Well, by definition, the Laplace transform is the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times our function t cubed dt. Again, we can solve this with integration by parts. We're going to have to do it a several times. Because I have a polynomial, though, we can use that shortcut with integration by parts where we list the polynomial and its derivatives, t cubed, 3t squared, 6t, 6, and 0. And the other part, e to the negative st, and its antiderivatives, which is negative 1 over s e to the negative st, positive 1 over s squared, e to the negative st, negative 1 over s cubed, e to the negative st, 
and finally positive 1 over s to the fourth e to the negative st. And then we kind of tic-tac-toe down the diagonals, making the first one positive, then negative, then positive, then negative, to write out our expression for the integral. It's going to be negative 1 over s t cubed e to the negative s t minus, we have a, I'm going to write that as 3 over s squared times t squared e to the negative s t plus, I'm going to write that, uh, actually it's plus a minus, so that's still negative. And we can write that as 6 over s cubed e to the negative, oops, forgot the t, t e to the negative s t, and then a minus 6 over s to the fourth, and then just e to the negative s t. And we're going to integrate that from 0 to infinity. When we plug the infinity in, uh, L'Hopital's rule will show you that eventually plugging the infinity in with the t cubed, t squared, or the t, those three terms are all going to go to zero. Uh, so will the last term. So plugging the infinity in makes every term go to zero. I encourage you to check that with L'Hopital's rule to check it. When we plug the zero in, the t cubed goes to zero, the t squared goes to zero, the t goes to zero. And the e to the negative st goes to 1. And so we end up with 0 from plugging the infinity in minus a negative, which makes it positive, 6 over s to the fourth. And so we end up with the Laplace transform of t cubed being just 6 over s to the fourth. Now, as you can imagine, calculating these Laplace transforms by hand over and over again is going to become quite tedious, especially for Laplace transforms that tend to come up more commonly than other Laplace transforms. And so what we'll often do, rather than relying on the definition, is we will use a Laplace transform table in order to calculate our Laplace transforms. But first, there's an important property of Laplace transforms that's going to make it easier to use the table. And we present it here without proof, but if you wanted to actually derive the proof with the definition, it comes out quite straightforward, actually. Uh, the Laplace transform of a constant times a function plus another constant, actually that function should be in t, plus another constant times another function, and you could continue this with infinite terms, really, is equal to, it turns out that constants can be pulled out, and then we can treat the functions individually. So it's the same as the constant times the Laplace transform of the first function, plus the second constant times the Laplace transform of the second function, and so on. So if I wanted to find the Laplace transform of 6t cosine of 3t plus 8t squared e to the 7t, that would be equal to 6 times the Laplace transform of t times the cosine of 3t plus 8 times the Laplace transform of t squared e to the 7t. Then I can go to my table to figure out what the Laplace transform is for these two functions individually. Let's first look at the t cosine of 3t. Here is a table of Laplace transforms. If you notice on the table, equation number 16 has t cosine of a constant times t. That's exactly what we're looking for. All right, so from our first term, we've got the 6 out front. Then we've got s squared minus k squared. And notice k is the number in front of the variable inside the cosine. So 
k is 3. In this case, 3 squared is 9. Divided by parentheses s squared plus k squared again. 3 squared is 9 squared. And so that's how we can use the table to help us find that Laplace transform quite nicely. Then we'll have plus 8 times the Laplace transform of t squared times e to the 7t. Noticing on our Laplace transform table, equation number 14 shows us the transform for t to some power times e to some power times t. I've placed a copy of equation 14 here on the screen, and we can see that our n, our exponent, is going to be 2 because it's a t squared. And the a, the constant in front of the time there in the exponent, is going to be 7. So we'll plug it into our Laplace transform equation. We have 8 times n factorial, which is 2 factorial. Well, 2 factorial is just 2. We can leave it like that over s minus our a, which is 7, raised to the n minus 1, or n plus 1, which is going to be the third power. So cleaning it up, our Laplace transform of 6t cosine 3t plus 8t squared e to the 7t is 6 times s squared minus 9 over s squared plus 9 squared plus 16 over s minus 7 cubed. And that would have been a pain to do by the definition, but using the table it came out quite nicely. Let's try one more using the table. Let's find the Laplace transform of t plus 3 squared. Well, in this case, we're going to massage it a little bit to make it easier to work with because I don't see anything like a t plus a to some exponent on the table. But we can work out that t plus 3 squared. Multiplying it out would be t squared plus 6t plus 9. And then we can say that's equal to the Laplace transform of t squared plus 6 times the Laplace transform of t plus 9 times the Laplace transform of really just 1. And then we're going to go to the table to see how the table can help us with those. The first three equations are going to be what we're looking for in this case. We've got the 1, the t, and t to any exponent. I have copied these three equations onto our screen here so we can use them. The Laplace transform of t squared is just going to be our exponent factorial, which is 2 factorial, that's just 2, over s to the n plus 1, well 2 plus 1 is 3, plus 6 times the Laplace transform of t, which is 1 over s squared, plus 9 times the Laplace transform of 1, which is just 1 over s. And cleaning it up, we get 2 factorial is 2 over s cubed, plus 6 over s squared, plus 9 over s. And now we've calculated our Laplace transform using the table. Now that we've taken a look at how we can use the table to help us calculate a Laplace transform, Another thing that's important for us to be able to do is to go the other way and to find what's called the inverse Laplace transform. Where we basically are going to use the table backwards. And we might have to make it work factor out constants. So for example, we might have some capital F of S. This has already been transformed because it's a capital S of 12 over S to the fifth. Well, let's go to the table and see if we can find something that looks like a constant over s to the fifth. 
I notice equation 3 in the denominator has got s raised to some exponent. So this is probably of the form of equation 3. So I stuck 3 up here so we can refer to it. What we notice is that the exponent is going to be n plus 1. So if our 5 represents n plus 1, the exponent we're going for must be a 4. Which means the numerator is going to have to be 4 factorial. The problem is 4 factorial is not 12. If you do 4 factorial, 4 times 3 is 12 times 2 is 24. So we're going to have to massage this 12 to make it the 24 we want it to be. Well, to make 12 into 24, we need to multiply it by 2. But in order to not change the value of the expression, we're also going to have to divide by 2. That second divide by 2 was not part of the function we were looking for, so I'm going to pull that out front. And then we will have 24, or 4 factorial, over s to the fifth, or 4 plus 1 power. And now I can see, when we reverse Laplace transform or use the table backwards, the 1 half is my constant, and then 4 is my exponent on t to the fourth. So now we have found the inverse Laplace transform working the table backwards. 1 half t to the fourth has a Laplace transform of 12 over s to the fifth. Let's try another one. Let's look at something that's already been transformed to become 6 over s minus 9. Let's look at the table for something that looks like that. I'm going to have to scroll to find something useful. And what I do see is equation number 10. We've got 1 over s minus a. That's very similar to the format of the one we're looking for. All right, so I've placed equation 10 on here. We're going to try and get it into the correct form. Well, we see that our s minus a, it looks like the a is going to be equal to 9. We're probably going to get an e to the 9t, which works great, except for the fact that there's a 6 in the way. Well, fortunately, we can write that as 6 times 1 over s minus 9. And then the 1 over s minus 9 becomes that e to the 9t with the 6 out in front of it. And so we untransformed or inverse Laplace transformed our expression to get 6 e to the 9t. Let's try one last example. Let's say our function is equal to 3s minus 4 over s squared plus 36. Now if I look at the table, I'm not going to find anything that looks like this at all. But what I can do is distribute the divide by s plus 36, s squared plus 36, onto both parts. And when I do, I get 3s over s squared plus 36 minus 4 over s squared plus 36. Let's look at our table and see if anything looks like those expressions. As I'm looking through our table, I notice equations 6 and 7 look really similar. We've got an s squared plus a perfect squared, s squared plus a perfect squared. One numerator has a constant and the other numerator has s. Those are probably the equations we want. All right, I copied equations 6 and 7 on here to allow us to play with them. One thing I see is that we probably should rewrite that 36 as 6 squared. So we see that constant squared in the form. The one that's got an s in it is probably not too hard to work with. We're going to rewrite that as 3 times s over s squared plus 6 squared. That's pretty straightforward. Looks exactly like equation number 7 now. That's going to be a cosine of 6t. 
The other one I'm going to have to do a little bit more work with, though, because you notice the constant in the numerator needs to match the constant in the denominator, which means I want to have a 6 in the numerator. So first I'm going to pop that 4 out front, and then I'm going to multiply by a 6 in the numerator, and to stay balanced, we're going to have to also divide by 6. The divide by 6 is to stay balanced. 6 in the numerator, s squared plus 6 squared. And now I'm in the correct form to use the table backwards. We have 3 times s over s squared plus 6 squared is going to be the cosine of 6t minus 4 sixth reduces to 2 thirds, and then 6 over s squared plus 6 squared is the sine of 6t. And now we have found the inverse Laplace transform of our function. These are a bit odd to work with initially, but now is your chance to practice some of these, practice with the definition, practice using the table, and also practice finding inverse Laplace transforms from the table. We'll see you in class. Let me know if you have any questions.